Tucked away in the white mountains of New Hampshire nestles the tiny hamlet of Wanalanza. Here where winter snows lie buried deepest are located kennels in which purebred Chinook dogs are raised. All descendants of that famous lead dog of the first bird Antarctic expedition. The breed was originally established by Arthur T. Walden who crossed the Greenland Husky with a St. Bernard. One of their offspring was Chinook who was then mated with a shepherd dog. Today the purebred Chinook is light fawn in color, weighs 90 to 110 pounds. He is keen and alert, intelligent and friendly, and not fierce in spite of his size. Since 1931, Mrs. Julia P. Lombard has been raising Chinook dogs at the Wanna Lancet Hubbard Kennels. Once a day, she personally carries the food to her charges. And eagerly she is awaited, for the cold mountain air puts a keen edge on the dog's appetite. Ground meat mixed with puppy crumbs and water usually makes up the daily meal. And mighty satisfying it is, too, according to the tail he wags. Sometimes fish is substituted for meat. And there's nothing like curling up for a good snooze after a big dinner. But sharp ears detect the footsteps of Mrs. Lombard, who now comes to the kennels to let out the dogs for their daily exercise. litter of puppies. Seven squirming little fellows cuddling close to mother and all doing nicely. Ten days old, they look like guinea pigs, but it won't be long before each pup grows up to be a big, strong sled dog. And now mother leads her puppies out into the fresh air and sunshine. They are nearly a month old and can walk pretty steadily although their hind legs are still a bit wobbly. Somewhat skeptical of the snow at first, its softness soon pleases them. A warm little coat of fluffy fur keeps out the chill and makes playing in the snow lots of fun. Of course, it makes a fella hungry too, and there's nothing like dipping into a dish of hot soup on a cold day. And now exactly 53 days old, the puppies are growing up. They are more alert, more playful, but still keep pretty close to mother. Still become a little scared when she tries to teach them to be on their own. She soon finds out though that it isn't easy to get away from this bunch, not even for a minute. When the dogs are about a year old, their training begins. At first, a jerk line is used to teach them to come when called. But soon he dashes toward the trainer at the command of one word, come, without the aid of any line. And now a harness is put on the dogs, and they are hitched to a sled for the first time. At the call, yake, or go, they are pulled along the road to demonstrate what the word means. Teaching the dogs to make a complete turn is next. The cry, haw, come in, means turn on the left. G, come in, on the right. The dogs are driven entirely by verbal commands without reins or halters of any kind. And it doesn't take long for these bright animals to catch on. In spite of general belief, the lead dog is not necessarily the biggest of the team, nor the best fighter. He is, however, invariably the most intelligent. He has many responsibilities in addition to obeying every command. Besides keeping the speed of the dogs up to about 11 or 12 miles an hour, he must know just how sharp a turn can be made without entangling the other dogs and sled. He knows, largely by instinct, 
whether or not the ice in lake and stream is strong enough to hold the man and sled behind him. And now they've arrived at the ski slope, where the dogs are greeted by none other than Hannes Schneider, one of the greatest skiers of all time, now an exile from his native land. The sled dogs are frequent visitors to the inns of New England in winter. Of course, these friendly animals are a great favorite among the guests who admire them for their handsome appearance and affectionate disposition. Furthermore, the dogs add greatly to the enjoyment of winter sports. For a fast ride in a cozy sled over the frozen hills is a great thrill, as you may well imagine. With nerves a tingle, they're off. Inside the truck, the Chinooks are going to a race for the annual New England Championship. Although not raised for racing, but rather for pulling power and endurance, their stamina is always a strong factor over a long course. Many teams are entered in this yearly race, which is run over a 20-mile circuit. They take off at three minute intervals and the team making the run in the shortest elapsed time is the winner. Some entries come from 200 miles away. Some drivers are young women who are expert in handling these racers that are raring to go. At the signal, she's off with the wind, off with her huskies as they churn up the snow with their flying feet. The villagers and guests from the neighboring towns take keen interest in the race. Standing at carefully chosen vantage points, they cheer on their favorite team. Mrs. Lombard is among those anxiously waiting at the finish line. The first dog sled comes in, but it is not necessarily the winner since it is the elapsed time that counts. As another team comes in, waiting in the group is Arthur T. Walden, the first man to bring sled dogs to New England and who took Chinook and his sons almost to the South Pole. And now as the drivers and their dogs get a big hand from the audience, Mr. Walden presents a silver cup to the winner. One cup, no, two cups. No, three cups, this is his lucky day. See what's happened to the girl drivers. Uh-oh, there they are now, coming round the mountain. Well, I declare. <laughs> <laughs> 